Hi, this is the intersection where faith, life, and culture meet. I'm Justin May. And I'm Eric Targe. We're so excited as we're continuing our series, Life and Breath, today focusing on the topic of adoption. Uh, and Ooh, we, that's a good topic. It is a good topic. It's, it's really something topic. That, that I hope to do. My wife and I have talked. We want to do that sometime down the road. I know you guys, you and Charlie this as close. well, you and your wife are working on that. And today we're, we're speaking to someone who we've spoke to a couple weeks back. I'm so excited to have him again. I feel like we are so incredibly blessed that he'd be willing to talk to us again. Yeah. Uh, but Dr. Moore, thanks for joining us. Dr. Well, thanks Russell for having Moore. me. So for those who don't know, Dr. Russell Moore is the president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Convention. He is regularly seen as a commentator and representative for evangelicals on a variety of issues, uh, and adoption is something that's really close to his heart. Yeah, he actually has written a number of books on the topic of varying sizes. So they've got Adopted for Life, and then he edited Adoption and Orphan Care, which is much, much smaller. It's, it's very manageable size. And then if you really need small booklet one, he's got a really a cool one here. Uh, thank you for writing those, Dr. Thank Moore. You. Thank you. Um, so let's just dive into it. Why you? I, I just held up three examples of things that that you've written or edited. Why is adoption so important to you personally? Like, why yeah. of all the books you could write, 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 why write three books on adoption? Well, I, I wrote. Uh, I started writing on it because my wife and I went through years of infertility and miscarriages, and mm. uh, at one point, uh, she said. I think that maybe the Lord is calling us uh, to pray about adoption. And I considered myself to be very pro-adoption uh, and so forth in theory, but I was really reluctant. And uh, the Lord changed my mind and heart through that. But, but on the other end of it, what I wanted to do was to go back and say, where did that reluctance come from? Mm -hmm. And so sort of speak to somebody who's in the same situation that, that I was in but then also to say, uh, this actually is an issue for all of us, not just for people who are adopting, but everybody in the church is called to care for widows and orphans in their distress, James 1.27 uh, says. And that doesn't mean for everybody to adopt or everybody to, to foster. There's a variety of different ways that we can do that and to, to explore that. It's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Moore, I want to go a little, a little bit to the theological route here, because I think the, the term adoption comes up theologically so many times in the Bible, right? It's kind of, I know Trevor Burke uh, in his uh, biblical theology of sonship says that it's actually like the key metaphor to understanding uh, who, who we are in Christ, being adopted into this family. But adoption is, as you're describing it, and like what we're talking about, seems to be very different because you don't actually see that talked about a lot in the Bible. Uh, there isn't a command to, to go and adopt. So can you give us, what is the theological rationale for adoption? Why should Christians be thinking about adoption and not simply, uh, you know, giving to orphanages? Yeah. Now they're called group homes for the most part, but like, why should Christians be thinking about adoption in particular? Well, because uh, for, for one thing, uh, the scripture speaks to uh, the need for children to exist in families. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that we need uh, physical care and food, although we need that. Uh, we need to be loved. We need to belong. We need to be in, in families. So uh, Group homes and orphanages can be good things as temporary measures, you know, emergency sort of triage uh, situations. But that can't be uh, the, the ultimate end because that's, that's not what human flourishing is about. But also because uh, we are the people who understand what it is to be adopted into a, a family. So you're right. I mean, the New Testament is hinging around adoption so much. And one of the things I think that we miss is I think when we look at adoption in Romans and Galatians and Ephesians, we assume, well, that's speaking to the Gentiles, that they're coming, they're being adopted into the family. So I think sometimes there's a sense in which we say, well, the 
the Jewish Christians were the real uh, children of God, and then the Gentile Christians were the adopted uh, children of God, which is something that, that sort of a distinction that you see coming up in these conversations all the time. I will have, we have five sons, uh, two of them we adopted, the other three came along the more typical way. And sometimes people will say, well, which ones are the adopted ones and which ones are the real ones? Mm. And uh, I say, everyone we're feeding is real. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and also the adopted is not an adjective in the scripture. Adopted is a past tense verb. So it tells you how you came into the family of God. But once you're in the family of God, and that was true for Jews and Gentiles, Abraham started as a Gentile who had to be adopted into the family of God. Yeah. And once you're in the family of God, you are a child of God with everything relationally and everything in terms of inheritance that belongs to any other child of God. So that ought to change the way that we see ourselves within the church. And it also ought to change the way that we see uh, our families. Mm, I love that. I love that, that word that adoption tells us how we are, not who we are. And that's just such, such a powerful, uh, such a powerful testimony because it, it should shape how we look at orphans. It should shape uh, how we look at those who are vulnerable around us. I know that I often tell people that uh, my fourth son uh, was born uh, three weeks early. That's part of his story. We're not embarrassed about that or ashamed of that. But I don't speak of my four regular children and my premature son, Jonah. Uh, <laughs> and in my obituary one day, it will not say he's survived by four uh, sons and a premature son. It's, it's his story, <laughs> but it tells him how he came in. But there's no distinction once he's here in terms of the relationship, in terms of all the... Uh, all the privileges of being part of the, the family. And I think the same thing is true in terms of adoption. That is such a good, that is such a good example. I love that. So Dr. Moore, there's obviously people in the church who have very strange ideas uh, in the church and in culture. They, they take that, they say, okay, real children, fake children. They, they, get the, they get the wrong idea about what adoption is. But can you, can you speak to the people that are like, okay, I'm all in. Uh, I'm, I, I want to, to play a role in adoption, but they're not entirely sure what their role should be. H how does one discern that? If they should be the adoptioner, the fosterer, the, the person who just supports those who are doing that? I spend most of my time now uh, convincing people not to adopt uh, rather than convincing them to adopt because... Uh, the worst thing that can happen is for somebody who's not called or equipped to adopt a child doing it. Uh -huh. And sometimes you will have people who will think, well, if I adopt a child, I can sort of fill some need that I have. I've even known people who have thought, well, our marriage is kind of rocky. If we participate in adoption, uh, we can, we can heal it. That is a okay. terrible idea. You're just Adding bringing more kids a fixes child everything. into it. Yeah. An awful situation. Uh, and so what I would say is just ask the question. You don't have to know exactly what it is that God's calling you to do. Uh, I think if you say, God, I want to, James 127, care for widows and orphans in their distress. Will you show me how to do that? God will do that. Hmm. And there are, there are, infinite numbers of, of ways uh, to, to do that. Some of it means helping to support people who have adopted or who are uh, fostering. Some of it uh, has to do with uh, opening your home to maybe uh, teenage unwed mothers or working in a pregnancy resource center. I mean, there's so many uh, different ways. I was uh, visiting a church one time years ago uh, where a man stood up and gave his testimony, you could tell he did not want to be on the platform. Uh, but he said, you know, uh, I'm a mechanic and God's gifted me with knowing how cars uh, work and fixing them. And we've got a lot of single moms in our communities, uh, in our community. And what I'm going to do is every Saturday, first Saturday of the month, 
I'm going to be here and I'll just do basic kind of checking up on your car and helping you to know what's, what's wrong with it. Well, that's God's taking his gifts and putting those gifts to work in terms of, of helping vulnerable uh, women. Well, I mean, if you just start asking the question, then what you'll find is if God's calling you to adopt, you're going to have a, an ongoing desire uh, to adopt. And you're going to have people in your life who can help you to evaluate whether or not or foster or help supporting somebody. All of those different ways. Uh, some of it to do, frankly, uh, there are a lot of Christians who are called to uh, be with elderly people who are in distress and who are in need of families. I mean, orphan, being an orphan doesn't just happen at the beginning of life. There are a lot of orphans uh, because their families are gone or their families aren't around. They're, they're not paying attention to them. And they need uh, those who will adopt them as grandparents uh, and be there with them in their homes or in their, their nursing homes. So I think just asking the question, God, what would you have me to do is actually 90% of it. That's such a good word though. Yeah. People, people are just, they don't have a family. And like we've talked about homelessness in the past oh, yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. It's just so interesting to see how all of these things intersect. People, they need parents, they need grandparents. People need kids, right? You need, yeah. you need a kid to just go welcome you and say, hey, you're, you're my dad, you're my grandma now, and I'm going to love you. And you need, you need you. family, you need community. You know? Yeah. Uh, okay. So you just talked about the individual level, but like, all right, moving back just a little bit and looking kind of at the local church level, how, you know, maybe do you have some good strategies, some, some commonalities maybe between churches that you've seen, like how does a, a church really create a culture that, that values, that encourages, that supports adoption rather than it being just, Hey, there are these people that go to this church and some of them have adopted. Yeah. Well, I think it, it has to happen uh, largely organically. I think there are a lot of people who think what I want to do is to have the program uh, and to have the, the plan mapped out for what we're going to do at our congregation. And then we start. And the, the problem with that is you have to throw it all out and, and rework it uh, as you go. Because what I have seen is that God often uh, is working very differently from church to church. So you may have one church that has to concentrate a lot on uh, families who have in adopted internationally. Another church that's really supporting families who are adopting domestically. Another church that's uh, dealing with foster care primarily. And so you just have to kind of see where is God working in our congregation and, and work toward that. Or even, I mean, one of the most remarkable things that I've seen in the past couple of years was a congregation that just happened to be talking to a social worker one time who was talking about what it's like to go into a home where you have parents who are in a very, very dangerous situation, remove the child from the home. And the social worker said, it's awful because I have to sit there with the child while I'm on the telephone calling person after person after person, seeing who could temporarily take that child, which means I have to rehearse the meth lab or whatever was going on in the home in front of the child. And the child has to see how many people are saying no. And so this congregation said, well, how about this? We'll create a place in our congregation uh, where we can have trained and equipped uh, people caring for those, uh, those children while the social worker has a place where he or she can, can make all of these calls. I mean, that, that isn't something that they would have been able to plan ahead of time. It was just they saw what was going on in their community and said, we've got the means to do this. I think most of it happens that way. Wow. That's so cool. That's such a good word, because I, can I tell yeah. you, I'm someone who loves a good program. I'm like, okay, what do we, <laughs> what do we gotta do? Who do we put in charge? What are the structures? Let's break out the Excel sheet. And that is such a good word because you never would have got there. You never would have seen the, yeah. the need and the brokenness and, and how that shapes a person. And that shapes and hurts and leaves, a, and that leaves an emotional wound that, that stays for so long. And this church listened. They didn't do what, 
what my heart says, which is like, okay, let's hop into this. Let's figure it out. Let's get a budget, a proposal, a PowerPoint. That's why nobody like, likes you. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's very unpopular on the staff. Very well, unpopular. Also, I think the problem is, I think a lot of churches don't know how, how long-term their commitment is going to be. Yeah. Because sometimes I think uh, churches think, well, we're going to support a job for families. And that means we're helping them through the process. We're there at the, uh, at the airport uh, when they come home, whatever. Uh, but in every case with adoption or foster care or any sort of orphan care, you always have tragedy and brokenness where, uh, from the very beginning, which means it's going to require ongoing walking with those families uh, from that point on and not forgetting that. And, and sometimes that means uh, I was talking to a, a really heroic woman, Christian woman. She and her husband had adopted very, very special needs uh, kids with all kinds of uh, issues. And she said, you know, the people in our church, they want to support us, but what they'll say is we'll babysit for you. So you and your husband can go away uh, for a night or a weekend. She said, what I don't want to say is, yeah, but it takes me two weeks to ramp up for that and two weeks to ramp down from that. Uh, and so she said, it feels like saying, you know, they're saying we want to bring you a casserole and I'm saying, well, actually, we want filet mignon. And, uh, and, and what was really required in that situation are people in the church coming in and proactively saying, what is it that you need in yes. an ideal situation? And that, that's just something we, I don't think to do that, uh, yeah. but it's really what we need to do in those situations. That's such a good word. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of really great, very just practical, very edifying advice that we're getting off of this on such a very, very important topic to I know to us and obviously to you, Dr. Moore, and to what we hope is everybody watching. Um, and we could talk about this for another two or three hours, but Dr. Moore has other people to talk to today. Dr. Moore, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us on The Intersection. I, I hope you'll join us again at some point in the future. Anytime. Thanks for having me. If you like this contract. video or this podcast, make sure to subscribe, press like, leave five stars, say something nice. If you know or you have a story of adoption uh, that you want to share, if you if you have some advice, maybe you're someone who, adop who has adopted and you're like, hey, this is how you can support adoptive parents, foster parents, other things. Share. We can all learn from each other and we would all be blessed by that. Thanks for watching.